back. <laughs> For anyone who's new here, my name's Chris Moore. I am a dance photographer and dance choreographer uh, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, this video is kind of different. Um, I took a long break from uploading like anything on social media. I think I took probably like four months off Instagram and I haven't uploaded a YouTube video in quite a long time because I've been dealing with a lot of personal issues and a lot of things that have been really hard to discuss with other people. Um, so the purpose of this video is to talk about those things, talk about what I went through and there's some experiences there that um, hopefully it'll help you guys in some way, shape, or form, even if it only connects with one person. So let me give you the reasons why I took a break from social media. I deal with a heavy level of depression. I've dealt with depression since I was 16 years old and it's not something I can control and it's not something I really understand why it's happening to me. I ran into a lot of stupid issues in my life that made me feel bogged down and feel like I couldn't get things done. I had car troubles. My, it, my car cost a lot of money to uh, fix this fall. Another reason that I'm dealing with some financial troubles is because I'm dancing as an apprentice for a ballet company right now. And apprentices are unpaid. I'm dancing 26 hours a week, which puts a heavy time constraint on me. So I was forced to take less teaching hours this year when normally I would be taking a lot more hours and getting a lot more money. So things like rent, things like car payments, things like credit card payments became very hard. Along with all of that, I live in Minnesota. So the primary form of me making money, which is photography, is cut down to almost nothing in the winter because I don't have a readily available studio space that I can rent and people don't want to shoot outside. I had hours and hours and hours and hours spent in the car driving because I work at a studio that is an hour and a half away from the company that I'm dancing for. So I drive 45 minutes down to the the company that I dance for in rush hour and then outside of rush hour it's an hour and a half drive to the place where I work and then I have to drive home at the end of the night it's a lot of time it's a lot of time it's a lot of gas it's a lot of money it's a lot of miles it's very monotonous so a lot of this prevented me from taking photos and doing the things that I really love with photography so I wasn't able to create as much and that made me feel very bogged down and I want to shoot more. I want to prioritize this more. And I really love this. I really love photography. I love, I love dance with all of my heart but photography was my first passion and dance kind of just got thrown into the mix. So. With all of that, it equals money issues. And then, lastly, something that I've dealt with in the last two months is I had a very brief brush with some PTSD from when I was in the military. And I don't think I'm traumatized or had experiences that even warrant that type of reaction to me. I was I was in the studio and we were dancing and there was a scene that for some reason reminded me very vividly of something that I saw when I was in Iraq. And it was like I was there again. It was a f momentary flash of 
feeling like I was in that moment again, and it was very, very sad. It was a very sad moment. And I don't feel comfortable sharing what I experienced yet, but it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't very, it wasn't like I was being shot at or anything. This isn't like combat PTSD or anything, but it was so shocking and scary that I just, I had to run out of the room. I didn't know what to do. And I ended up breaking down and my, luckily my sister was there to comfort me because she dances at the same company. And It's been really weird since then, uh, trying to dance in that scene, be an actor and act through these experiences. So within that time span of the last six months, I've dealt with those series of issues and the causes of them are plain to see, but they're minor, but the effect was that I fell behind on editing my I didn't I wasn't able to wake up in the morning my memory was slipping constantly I felt like there was no hope of me fixing anything so what are the solutions they're gonna vary from person to person these work for me, they might not work for you, but it's important for you to try and find ways to encourage yourself and make yourself better and heal from the things that are going on around you. Having an organized and clean workspace can make the difference between you getting things done and not being able to do anything at all. It really helps with feeling good in the space that you're in and being able to get things done. Another thing that I found that helps is to write down my thoughts. Sometimes journaling seems silly. It's one of those things that I struggle with because honestly I'll get like halfway through a notebook and I feel like I have to finish the notebook but then I kind of forget about the notebook so then I don't write in the notebook and then I come back and there's like a six month gap between when I wrote down things last and I wrote down things again. But sometimes it's really just, it's good to write down what you're feeling. I have been keeping a notebook by my bed that just has the things and the thoughts that are going through my head. The things that, you know, I'm feeling, the things that are causing me to have, you know, emotions that are negative, have thoughts that are negative. And that has helped me organize and figure out what is causing the things that are making me feel this way so I can find the solutions to them. So it's a really good way to just kind of organize your thoughts. Speak positively. There's so much negativity. I am not good at this. I am not good at this. And I speak positively about speaking positively a lot, but it's time that I practice what I preach because the more I put out like negative energy into the air, the more other people around me start to be negative and then that compounds on the negativity and that compounds on the negativity. And you never know what like just a little positivity will do for your mind space. And it's affecting my choreography and it's affecting my photography and it's affecting the things that I do during the day. And for me, that makes all the difference. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm spending more time with friends and family. I put friends and family on the back burner for so long. Because of my job, I'm gone a lot. I am constantly working, constantly teaching, constantly dancing, constantly photographing, constantly editing. And there's just not a lot of time to fit in family schedules and family events and friends and doing things outside of it. But recently I've remembered the importance of family and all the things that they bring to your life. I've honestly found that they understand more than I know because even my parents have been through things like this. My dad has been through things like this. It's important to create a good support system around you. And that is the first step. Just spending time with friends and family and really recharging 
they can help you get up no matter how far you've fallen. Reducing stress. Now, this can be as simple as doing something that you love. For me, photography is one of those things. I really love doing photography and spending time doing it. Another thing that I really love is playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends. I don't know why, but those little things that are in my life that help me just burn a little bit of time with friends and make me feel better really do help the overall depression. It really does make me feel like I have a purpose and have work-life balance. Get off social media. I'm not kidding when I say that it is the biggest cause of stress for a lot of people. Get off social media, turn off your phone, stop communicating for a week, a month, six months, if you have to. Obviously, keep a support system around you that knows where you are and how to contact you. For me, I use a different app on my phone for family and friends that need to get a hold of me. And then all my other messaging systems are business only. So understand that you going off social media is not going to make your following go away. You're going to not, you shouldn't be worried about what your following is gonna do what the people around you are gonna say about it. Believe it or not, your mental health means more than your social media presence. I, I deleted the apps off my phone for a while. I did not go on social media for a good two months at a time. And even when I did, it was simply to answer someone back who was concerned about me. And that, for me, was the most that I could handle at the time. The last thing that I have to say is talk to someone about this because you need a support system. You need people around you that are going to help you get through what you're going through. Whether that be your parents, whether it be your siblings, your friends, or someone professionally able to deal with things like this. You need to talk to someone and you need to explain what's going on. Be open, be honest, and if you explain it, they will understand. The worst thing you can do is isolate yourself from everyone and make yourself feel alone because that is a step in the wrong direction and it can lead to many, many bad things. Now, I'm moving forward. I'm gonna be a better person because of these experiences. I've learned so much through the experiences that I've been through in the last six months about myself and about others and about the things that they're dealing with. And I'm so excited to share those experiences with other people now. I've got a lot of things coming, a lot of new videos coming out. I've actually already filmed a couple of them and they will be out soon. I'm back on social media. Follow me on Instagram at Chris Moore Photos if you haven't already. I'm going to be uploading here weekly, I'm going to be uploading in, on Instagram weekly, and I hope that you enjoy what I'm going to come up with. This is going to be fun. I'm excited.